Welcome to Waterbox Live. Today we are adding sand to the 220.6 Dream Build. Over time and with maintenance, your sand blade gets depleted. So we're going to add sand, show you what to do and what not to do to add sand to your existing aquarium. Waterbox Wednesday. We are excited to be back here. It feels, feels like we haven't been here in a while. I feel like it's actually been like weeks, yeah. like weeks and weeks. <laughs> Three so, weeks total, I think. Um, we hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season, mm -hmm. Christmas, New Year, and we are excited to be back with you today. Um, yes. Restarting the Waterbox Lives. We've yes, been gone. Yes, it's been a while. It's 2020. That's yes. hard to believe. I know. I keep forgetting to write that whenever I do stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, as you may notice, is not here with us. There's, There's an, empty, an empty hole here. Empty hole here. Um, we are actually happy to say that Dean is now in Houston with our friends at Fish Gallery, and yeah. we do wish him the best of luck yeah. in everything. Yeah, so, we work so closely with Fish Gallery, so he's in a good place over there. Um, go do so, amazing things, and yeah. we miss you. Yeah. But here we are, and today Waterbox Live must go on. Must go on. The show <laughs> must go on. So today we're actually adding sand to the 220 build, mm -hmm. the dream build. And it has been up and running for a little bit over a year now. Yes, and, and it's looking amazing. It is, the corals are happy, the fish are happy, everything is great. But over time, in any aquarium, through siphoning in the sand to keep mm -hmm. it clean, just general breakdown for buffering right. and things like that, your sand bed tends to get lower and lower Yeah. over time. It loses that nice pristine it does. white. And it looks kind of like brownish and it yeah. needs a little bit of love. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you actually today, how do you add sand to an existing tank? Because there's right. wrong ways and there's right ways to do it. And you can go very bad if you right. do it the wrong way. Right. Um, and then just some, you know, how to's and we're going to actually show you doing it live, how to add sand to an existing reef tank. It's easy from the beginning. Mm -hmm. When you first set up a tank, dry sand, live sand, doesn't really matter what you use. Right. Once that tank is running, it matters a lot what you do. I can't believe it's been a year since we set this tank up. It's actually over a year. It's over a year. Yeah, and the people ask to see this tank all the time, so. And this tank is doing great. And the yeah. girls are happy, and I want and we want to show you that, and we've had this question a lot over the time, of like, hey, I want to add sand to my mm -hmm. existing tank. Can I? Some people do bare bottom systems in the beginning where there's no sand and then they decide that they want to do sand. Can I add it to it? If I've got existing sand, can I add any type of sand? You know, there's right. a lot of questions that go mm -hmm. into it that you may not know. So we're going to go over all of that. We're going to add sand to the tank, show you the best way to do it and uh, check out the, the 220 and see yeah. what the progress we is. We got Brian with us, Bahama, Jess, uh, Ricardo, Rob, a whole bunch of people here on YouTube commenting. Uh, we obviously have Adam B. He still wants us to shave our head. So I... Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not doing it because I'm a girl and yeah. that just doesn't work. So you're going to have to heckle. close. You're going to have to heckle Rich I don't know. on it's 2020, shaving his head. Waterbox Live, maybe. You never know. But I feel if you shave the head, you've got to do the facial hair too. Ugh. You can't do one and not the other. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, uh, we're going to yeah. go out there, go check out the 220. We started draining water out of it a little bit earlier so that we can combine a water change with the adding of the sand. <clears throat> kind of to kill two birds with one stone. And it's going to make it a lot easier to actually add the sand into the tank with less water in it. If you guys haven't already, share the stream. Uh, we're live on both Facebook and YouTube. So the 220, doing amazing. The corals are happy. But we also do have a lot of corals that sit on the sand bed. So if you are adding sand to your tank, you've got to be able to actually move them out of the way too. Because you don't want to go dumping sand on them um, while they're on the sand bed. So we're actually going to take them, put them into buckets while we add the sand. Um, so I'm going to start doing that while kind of going over some of the uh, golden rules of, you know, adding sand to your aquarium when it's existing. So we drained out roughly 40 gallons of salt water. 
You're going to use that as a water change. And by having less water in here, it's going to make it a little easier to pour those bags of sand in here right. too. And <clears throat> when you are adding sand to an existing tank, you cannot add dry sand. So <clears throat> you have to do, oh God, so short, <laughs> oh God. You have to add live sand to a tank that's already established. If you added dry sand to a tank that had uh, an existing sand bed, you would actually suffocate out the existing bacteria and microfauna that's already in the sand bed. And that is bad. So that is bad. Now, adding live sand, you can't rinse it beforehand without killing a lot of the bacteria. So it is gonna make a bit of a mess, which is just fine. Um, we have a lot of people that are really concerned when they add sand to the tank and it's cloudy and just sand debris kind of everywhere. Now like the bubble coral and the elegance that are really, really big, kind of kind of gently pull them out and let some of the water fall out of their flesh to make it a little bit easier on them to move. Because these are some big corals. As long as you let them deflate a little bit, they're gonna be okay. I'm gonna move a few things off the sand bed. Anything that might get covered up during the sand going in, because we're gonna add roughly say 40 pounds. Um, so quite a bit uh, of sand actually. Yeah, quite a bit of sand. Yeah, and you can even see a lot of it is gone, has just come out over the, the last year. Right, when we first started this, we had a solid two to three inch sand bed. And just over time, we've siphoned the sand bed to keep it cleaned up. Um, it does naturally break down to some extent because your sand bed is actually part mm -hmm. is actually part of your buffering ability. It keeps your pH up. Um, it does break down for calcium and stuff. So you are going to just naturally lose your sand bed. And this elegance is like one of our biggest pieces in here. That thing Crazy is massive. thing is, is it's look, like the size look, of a basketball. Look how small the skeleton is. Yeah. Fills up with, and with if this actually wanted to, it would fully go in to a skeleton, which I think is just crazy yeah. how much like water. Look at that. That huge elegance From coral. a basketball sized coral to that little skeleton. And now it could go even further in there and completely suck up into the skeleton. So corals are a lot of water, water size. I'm gonna take all the smaller ones. If you guys have any questions, post them down below. We'll try to get to them here uh, once we jump back in the studio. Um, this tank is looking good, Jess. There's it the is. corals are happy growing tank. so nicely. Another year from now, this thing's going to be just amazing. A lot of stuff is growing into itself already. Um, I mean, we do have a little bit of you know coral battles happening here or there, but that's to be expected with any established tank. Is you're going to have some kind of territory battles mm -hmm. with your aquarium. Sounds more exciting than it looks. When it it is. <laughs> yeah, it sounds more exciting, but really they just sting each other and the dominant one wins. Um, that's really all that happens. <laughs> <laughs> the coral battle. The coral battle yeah. begins. <laughs> and then we have one big leather here. What I like to do is try to like just scoop up because you naturally, you know, as you have crabs and snails in here, they kind of die off. Their shells stay lingering. So try and scoop up. Just to get all the debris. And a handful of the bigger stuff chunks of stuff. Yep. I always put them into one of the buckets because you never know where a hermit crab is hiding. Because they're really good at being inside a shell and you not knowing it. So save your hermits. Don't throw them away. So Jess, how often should we tell our viewers to, to perform this kind of task if they have a sand bed? That... That is a really varied question just for the fact that if you're dealing with more algae issues, I've had tanks where I've maintained before where we've had algae problems where I'm siphoning the sand pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. And then your sand lead gets low really quick. I would say on average for the normally maintained aquarium, I mean, I would at least say, you know, every eight to 12 months, mm -hmm. you're probably okay. gonna have the point where you wanna refresh your sand bed. And in honesty, this tank is gonna look so like fresh and clean yeah. and everything um, once the new sand goes in because when you put new sand in it's just so bright there's no chunks there's no shells any of that we had one star polyp hiding all the way back here 
One thing I did before any of this is I did change out the filter socks so that fresh all socks. fresh socks. It's gonna um, clear this water up <laughs> in no time. <laughs> um, so that all of the sediment from the sand gets caught, and then tomorrow this thing's gonna be clear, and you're gonna see how cloudy this is all gonna be by the time we're done with this. So yes. we're gonna. It's actually, gonna look quite ugly, but it is okay. It is, and the corals are okay. The fish are okay. Don't worry. I have a lot of people that are really scared about adding it and how um, cloudy it does look when it's done, but it's it's no big deal. Okay, I'm gonna have you hand me the bags of sand all the way up here. You want to cut them up here too? Yeah, I'm going to cut them up here. So we are using, because we started to 220 Dream Build with the Carib Sea Live Bimini Pink, we're going to continue with that. This is slightly chunkier than like the Oolite that we've used in some other um, builds, but it's still live. It's got the good bacteria. And that is the key to adding sand to an existing tank. You just cannot use dry sand. Yeah. Try and not make our lobby a complete mess. No matter what, this is a messy process. But you don't so have to do it too often. Bimini pink? Yeah, so this is a Bimini pink. And I try to like usually get a little bit of water into the bag. And this is another reason why I drained some of the water originally as well, because it is easier to get this bag of sand down here when your water level is lower. I'm gonna give a shameless plug. If you guys know about Carib Sea, they are gonna be at the family reunion here hey coming up at the end of the month. So if you wanna to talk to Carib Sea, hang out with Carib Sea, uh, definitely head over to waterboxaquariums.com forward slash the family reunion and uh, pick up your tickets because we have very few hotel rooms left. Um, it is selling out. So if you do it gently, it's not as bad for how cloudy it gets. I'm gonna hand you that one. And you can kinda just gently even it out a little bit. So we're aiming to get back to that two to three inch sand bed that we originally started with. And it may not be perfectly even when you first put it in. Once it clears up, you can kinda work with it a bit. And no matter what, it's gonna get cloudy. Not much you can do about Not that. Not much you can do about that. But once it clears up, it's going to be very, very pretty. So we're actually looking at probably anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds on this one. But this is also the 6 foot 220 Pro, so it's a big tank. Yeah. I mean, we used probably 120, 180 pounds of sand when we first did it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you can question that. When you add sand, do you risk moving any of the rock that's already there, or does it actually help stabilize it? No. So, good question. Um, when you're adding sand, it's not going to shift anything with your existing um, rock work, because that's pretty much set into the original base of the sand. Um, now, if you were doing something like where you're going from bare bottom, where some people do start their system out with absolutely no sand, and then you're adding sand, you may have to shift things around a little bit. Um, but it's really just going to create more uh, base around your rock work to keep it more stable. Whereas bare bottom tanks have less cushion almost. Peter Cherick that is going to be at the family reunion with us says don't fall in. I'm trying. You send the short person <laughs> up to do all this. <laughs> I could probably swim in this tank. It's actually pretty nice. So I'm trying to somewhat evenly distribute the sand. Like I said, you can't do this without making a mess, which is perfectly fine. If you're using the live sand, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, your fish are probably going to seem like they're a little bit, you know, freaked out, upset, but they're really just going to be fine once it clears up. Should you try to mix it in with sand that's currently there by like manually mixing it, or does it matter that you now have two layers of different sand? Okay, so good question. Anytime you have an existing sand bed, do not stir it up. Do not go put your hand in there. Do not try to um, mix it or anything with new sand or just in general, don't touch your sand bed. When you have a sand bed, the lower levels have certain uh, actual bacteria and some built up gases. 
and nutrients that if you were going to stir it up, it would actually put a lot of stuff into your aquarium that could be um, detrimental to the system. So you don't want to do that. I'm not going to spend too much effort even in and out because we can do that tomorrow too. Just kind of feeling that it's pushed because we have a lot of caves in here. You want your caves to be kind of even looking as well. I'm going to do probably half of another bag. So we're going to end up with probably 50 or so pounds in here just so everything's even. It's actually a pretty fast process. Pretty easy. Oh, oh yeah, no, it's not going to be so it's pretty. It's not really fun to look at right now, but there are some really pretty corals in there. But it, and I think it's also good to show that your tank can get this cloudy and messy mm -hmm. by doing this, and it's perfectly okay. Like there is no harm being done to this, the, you know, the corals, the fish, anything by adding sand. Um, and I feel in like all my time in running stores or just being in this industry, it's a very common question of like, how can you even add sand to a tank that's already running? Right. Or like people that have added sand, they're like, oh my God, it's cloudy. You know, I can't see in my tank. Is this normal? You know, kind of just not being comfortable with the way it looks, but it is completely normal. And all of the colors are going to look so amazing by the time this clears up. Everything's going to pop real nicely. It does. It brightens up yeah. your tank so much by having that clean white sand bed. All right, so that's the last one. I'm just going to kind of even it out. But everything will look that much better. And you're actually, by adding more sand, adding more surface area for the good bacteria to be. So it's beneficial for your system. It's aesthetically makes it mm -hmm. look better. Um, you know, as long as you're losing, using the live sand in an existing tank, there's no downside to it. It's just, you know, replenish your sand bed at its, as it's needed. And as murky as it looks, at this point you can actually add your corals back onto the sand bed. I'm going to start the water to fill back in for the water change. while we place the sand, the corals back in. We're gonna let this fill and you turn it on. When we come back in tomorrow, this tank's gonna look like nothing even happened. So Peter says he uses a four inch piece of PVC to make a funnel to kind of prevent the cloudiness, which is another way to do it. You could try to prevent it a little bit if you wanted to, but either way, I think you're still gonna have quite a bit of cloud. Yeah, you can definitely funnel and kind of space fill it in. Um, in a smaller tank, I think that probably is a good way to do it. But when you've got six foot of tank to fill in and 50 some odd pounds of sand, um, sometimes you just gotta go messy with it. Yeah. But if you got the extra time, definitely use like a funnel or something that gets it right down to the spot. Uh, I'm gonna turn that on real quick. And then we'll put the corals back in. Jess, are you gonna put the corals back in the same spot or are you just gonna rearrange um, them a little bit? It's probably a good time to rearrange it maybe. At least a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Right now, you can't really see much. <laughs> so it's generally just putting things back in wherever there's space so that they're happy overnight until you can kind of move them. The one thing with our tank is because the bubble coral and the elegance are so big, there's pretty much two spots that they can go. Yeah. That is their spots. It's also where they're happy. And for something like an elegance and bubble to be happy for this long term, we don't really want to mess that up either. Right. So they're going to go back to their original location. So we got a little elegance, and I'm going to completely guesstimate <laughs> that this is his spot. <laughs> it's probably Looks pretty close. I think it's great. <laughs> and then our bubble coral. Bubble corals are actually a more difficult coral to keep. So the fact that he's happy in his one spot, we are not moving him. But the rest of them are pretty easy going stuff that they could probably be placed anywhere. I'm gonna try and put them somewhat back to their original spot. And then in the morning, when I can actually see in here a little bit better, we'll probably rearrange them a little bit better. The main thing is that they didn't get covered in sand. 
right. and that they can uh, just kind of get through the clearing out process. Yeah, that's a real important thing. You don't want to be dumping sand on top of these corals. It is amazing that sand, even though the corals are naturally around it at all times in the ocean, sand is extremely aggressive on corals. Yeah. So if you have a if you have a coral that gets covered by sand by like a goby or just something, uh, it actually will kill them pretty quickly. Matthew says this is so informative. Thank you all for doing these videos. It's one of those. It's really is one of those topics that has come up a lot, and the this tank was due for some more sand to go into it. Let's see. We're gonna put Mr. Him here. So we did a poll on our Facebook group. Uh, maybe sometime at the end of last year on what people wanted to see. And it was definitive that you all wanted to see more maintenance, like how to's, how to get, you know, clean your tank, add sand, just anything along those lines. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of that here coming up. So definitely stay tuned. We're live every week. Every week. Wednesday doing... at 6 p.m. Yeah, so we'd love to hear kind of like any other ideas of what seems to be a hot topic of what you'd learn, like to learn how to do or just questions in general that you have. We have a lot of tanks around the office and we're happy to do different maintenance and, and topics on them. I am blindly placing corals in this tank. <laughs> Our good friend Scott Crow says, Jess, the video is awesome. <laughs> we have David all the way from Trinidad and Tobago here with us as well. Glad to have y'all with us. I think tomorrow maybe we'll have to pop in real quick and just post a video of how this tank looks with the new one cleaned up yes sand bed. definitely if you guys are on instagram instagram is make the place. sure to follow us on instagram it's, uh water box aquariums we'll go live yes. on instagram okay we'll check it out live tomorrow yeah. so all this all the corals are back in their place we're just going to fill the rest of the water back up to complete the water change once we turn it on the filter socks um is going to start pulling out a lot of that cloudiness and it's just yeah. naturally going to clear up come morning mid-afternoon tomorrow we're good. Not going to look like we even did anything except we have a beautiful sand bed. We're good on the corals? Yeah, good on the corals. The rest is kind of just shells and stuff. And just like that, can't tell yet because it looks <laughs> horrible, um, you've got a beautiful new replenished sand bed. Boom. And just How like that, that. How easy is that? We have a cloudy tank. <laughs> a cloudy tank. It's beautiful. <laughs> but I by hope morning, you enjoy. It will look beautiful. All the fresh socks will take all the that nastiness out and it's I feel like any time you clean or improve your aquarium, it makes it worse in the beginning. Yeah, you and you're always hesitant to change. do it because of that. You do a big water change, you do a big like scrubbing of the rocks or mm -hmm. anything major like that, removing around your rock, it makes the tank worse before it makes better. Yeah. So you won't be able to see until tomorrow what the tank looks like. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be nice. We're also, we're talking about the family reunion. It's coming up very, yes, very soon. Yes, it is coming up so fast. And we have a so lot fast. more details and schedule yeah. mm -hmm. and everything to go over. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of great A lot of really cool coming. stuff coming up with the family reunion, you guys. It's happening in about three weeks, a little over three weeks maybe. Yeah. Um, in the coming weeks, we're going to be t showing you guys what kind of raffles are going to be going on. We're going to have the full schedule, <clears throat> the speakers, the sponsors. Um, so if you haven't picked up your tickets to that, do it. There are very few rooms left in the room block. Rooms for the room block are almost gone. Mm -hmm. um, but you can go to the website. You can kind of see a lot of the speakers and mm -hmm. what they're going to be talking about. Schedule major raffle stuff going on yes. like you have there's so much stuff you can win whenever yes. you come there's down gonna there, be things so. you can win on site and we got some also some other special things that we're gonna be announcing soon so make sure you tune in next week and keep an eye out for that because this is gonna be an amazing event you want to be there we're gonna keep dropping more details about yeah. it um, and then next week uh, we're gonna be back here and we're gonna continue on with the 220 dream mm -hmm. build and we're gonna show you a that it's all cleared up all the corals are happy but we're gonna talk about like spot feeding corals, yeah. nutrition, different types of food, different types of corals, and kind of the how-to yeah. of how to make sure your corals are growing to the best that they can by feeding them. Yeah, it's so a great topic. That'll be a, that'll be a fun one, very hands-on, so mm -hmm. we look forward to coming back and doing that one. 
Love, Love it. Take a look at the tank again. Oh, yeah, it's so there we go. Beautiful. Look how beautiful. I mean, that's oh, what you man. buy a water box right there for, right? You just want the cloudy <laughs> <laughs> mess. <laughs> but I mean, at least we can show the dirty side yeah. to doing a lot of the tank maintenance. Is yeah. it's not pretty, and yeah. but tomorrow it's going to be beautiful, and the tank's going to look a lot better. And it was well overdue. We're at a year or so old with this tank. Yeah. Um, it really needed some And if you're sand. wondering what that tank is for you guys uh, watching the stream, that's the six foot Reef Pro 220.6 plus edition. Uh, plus edition. Mm -hmm. So that's our biggest production tank that we have. Yep, that's, that's the bad boy. That's Beautiful. the dream right there. Highly coveted. Yes. So <laughs> next week we'll have a chance to actually show you some of the corals a little bit more closer, feeding them, um, and just overall of the system. So, okay. I guess that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye.